great mastermind behind the EI mapping tool is my colleague Reinhard Post. Um, he's the one who came up with the idea and started to develop it and, and he's really the reason why we have mapping uh, at the moment. And the reason why uh, we started putting energy into it is because uh, we have different corporations with different countries on the topic of environmental impact assessment. And we realized we needed, at the start of such a cooperation, a kind of joint idea about you know, what are the strengths and what are the weaknesses of environmental assessment in that country, so that we could then jointly discuss so what needs work and how can we jointly work on this with you. The AI mapping is a very new tool and uh, during my studies and previous work I've never come across something like this. It provides a very high definition snapshot and uh, it aims to form a baseline of impact assessment. The tool goes into so much of, of detail. Where is the document required legally or not? Is it done in, in, in the practice or not? What does the guidelines say? What does the law say about a certain aspect of the EIA? Um, and how is it done in the, in the practice? It's an analytical tool. It's, it's a way to analyze how an environmental impact assessment is in a particular country or region. And we, we, what we've done is over the course of our roughly 20 years of experience of working with different countries and working with EIA systems, is we've identified what are all the possible ingredients you could include in your environmental impact assessment system. What could you add to your regulation or what kind of practice characteristics or uh, could you find in different places? Compare results over a period of time. Where was the system? I think another benefit of mapping, uh, and that might be a reason why people want to participate, is that we get really good discussions going generally. So it's not just about the results, the actual scores or the, the data that people give us. It's also about the discussion that happens during the mapping workshop. It is very important to have a mixed group so that you can you know, get um, answers from, from everybody. Um, you need people from the, from the authorities, the, the government authorities responsible for implementing the EIA systems in a country. You need consultants who are actually doing the EIAs, you need investors, you need um, people from, from NGOs, and um, uh, you need people from the academia. You can use the mapping, the EIA mapping as a monitoring instrument to kind of uh, uh, follow how EIA progresses in a particular country or in a province. Um, which is what we've done in Pakistan, because we uh, did a series of mappings in each of the different provinces of the country in 2010, and uh, we've just uh, repeated that in 2014, so we can see what has changed in the, in the past four years. There, there are many, many projects in the public sector, so I, I think uh, this is, uh, as a whole, this EIA mapping mechanism and this workshop is, is going to contribute to, to every stakeholder. Particularly in Sindh or in, in Pakistan, there are a lot of gaps. They are just writing, you know, writing, writing and writing, but not analyzing quantitatively or qualitatively. I've had a chance to um, know more about uh, AIA, though I've been doing some AIAs and now that I'm teaching AIA, it's, it, it really helps to look at the things uh, which I probably didn't look at before or didn't know before. So it's, it's a great learning experience for me personally as well.